Shalom, shalom, daughters of Tazai, and greetings from Ima Rafaya here at Teshua Community. I bring you great tidings today because we have a message prepared by Reat Dawi for only the daughters of Zion. And daughters, we're here to talk about being a pure and Kodesh daughter, set apart, not like the world, striving to please Almighty Yah each and every day of your life. Once you come to the knowledge of this truth, you must strive to please Almighty Yah. You have to cast down everything that is not like Him. And as you do that, you're walking in truth. You're an example to other daughters that are striving just like you. No, every day can be a challenge, but through Yahshua HaMashiach, there's nothing that you cannot overcome. Hallelujah. So the title of this message, my daughters, not for the men, but for the daughters, the blessings that a true daughter brings. And daughters, you have to ask yourself that. Am I truly a blessing from Almighty Yah? Am I striving for perfect perfection? Am I encouraging those daughters that are striving every day? See, we can always look at others and say they're not doing this and they're not doing that. But what are you doing? What are you doing to please Almighty Yah? Are you that an example that another young daughter can say, I would like to be like her? Yes, we all want to be like Yahshua HaMashiach, but you want to have another daughter just like you that's striving every day. And you want to see a daughter that is an overcomer. So today we have a message just for you from the man of Yah, and it reads, The wealth of the pure daughter, opposite of the foolish daughter. So which one are you today? Are you a pure daughter of Tazion, or are you foolish? Can I tell you, daughters, within yourself, in your heart, your mind, you know what kind of daughter you are. So we want to start with Sharat chapter 22, verse 1. It says, a foolish man is compared to a filthy stone, and everyone will express contempt to his dishonor. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Anyone that picks it up will shake it off his hand. Verse 3. It is a dishonor to be the father of an evil man, an undisciplined son, and the birth of a foolish daughter is a loss. Verse 4. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that lives dishonestly and shamefully brings grief to her father. She that is impudent dishonored dishonor both her father and her husband and will be despised by both. So daughters, you can ask yourself this question. Do I bring dishonor to my father and to my age? You can answer that with a pure lead today. And can I tell you what a foolish daughter does? She's loud. She has no discipline. She's slothful in all her deeds. And she's not a keeper of a home. Listen to me, daughters. I know that sometimes we cause things to happen to ourselves. But can I tell you, once you set your heart right to please Almighty Yah, even if, you're out, if you have to go out and labor, Yah will make a way for you to come off of that job so that you can learn to be a keeper, did you hear me? To be a keeper of your home. Laboring with your hands at home. Not out there on another man's job. See, most of the time we're doing it for our own pleasure. You're doing it only for your own pleasure. What things you have, you got to learn to be content. Not keeping up with the world, daughters. 
See, that's what that's what it's all about. Really keeping up with the world. You got to have a new car. You got to have a bigger house. You've got to have new furniture. You got to keep up with the the new the in fashion, the trendy things. Not the daughters of Zion. We don't. We we live simple. We live simple here, and we did learn the ways of the world. But once we got our heart right, we no longer live for the pleasures of the world. Getting your appetite under control. Every new cookie and every new chip that comes out, we don't have to have that. When you are a keeper at home, listen to me, daughters. When you are truly a keeper at home, you learn how to prepare meals, healthy meals, potatoes and rice. You have to learn how to cook those things. No, not the potatoes already cooked in a bag, frozen. You learn how to cook those things. So I told her, yeah, that being in this place, you learn discipline. It's not all about you, but it's about Almighty Yah. And you bringing yourself under discipline. Hallelujah. So a slothful daughter, she not, even if she's not married, she brings dishonor to her father. I came up to know my father wasn't in the home, but my grandfather was always there. My uncles were there. And I learned how to cook, how to clean the house, how to help watch my sisters and my brother. I learned those things. And those are the things that we, as the daughters of Zion, must learn how to do. Working with your children. My mother didn't potty train my baby sister, I did. Did you get frustrated? Well, sometimes being a young girl, you will get frustrated with those things. But can I tell you, daughters, once you come to the knowledge of the truth, if you don't do it, who's going to do it for you? You're going to hire somebody to potty train your little ones? Well, these are the things that we, as the daughters of design, must learn how to do. We must learn. Hallelujah. So, you know, even Eo, he suffered much. He did, he suffered. So a daughter should not speak on matters of Yahweh to a husband or a man. We cannot be foolish. So if you don't understand something, you start questioning this and questioning that. When you don't understand a matter, get on your knees before Almighty Yahweh and seek Him on the matters. And whoever your shepherd is, if he's a righteous man of Yah, he will give you the right answer to your prayer. See, so we're the type daughters today. We don't pray. We're not turning down our plate so we can get the answer from Almighty Yah. No, He's just not going to speak to you out of the Shemaiah. He will give you a messenger to lead and guide you in all truth. And because we're so polluted with the world and what, what's taking place in the world, I'm not saying we shouldn't be abreast of those things, but it shouldn't consume you. Do you hear me? It shouldn't consume you. When you have been a keeper of your home, I'm not saying don't look at the news. Look at the news so that you can be abreast, but abreast of those things, but don't let it consume you. You should fast, pray, pick up the Torah, which is your daily lecture, every day, and be consumed in Almighty Yah. Dress your mind in righteousness by picking up the daily lecture. But let us go on to Eo. And I want to start with chapter 2, verse 7. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yah. He smoked Eo with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Now, did you hear that? Satan was in the presence of Almighty Yah. And if he's talking about Eo, he knew that Eo was a faithful servant of Almighty Yah. So when you're faithful, you're going to be tried. But can I tell you, if you hold on and you're consistent in your prayer life and being faithful unto Almighty God, He will send you deliverance. Verse 8, And Eob took his pottery piece to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. As he was sitting there, his wife said to him, do you still retain your integrity? Are you still going to trust in Almighty Yah after what you're going through? Does He love you? Does He even care about you? Has He considered you? 
Why don't you just curse Yah and die? But Eob said to her, You speak as one of a foolish woman. What? Shall we receive dove at the hand of Yah? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did Eob not sin with his mouth. Eob knew. He knew from the beginning. This is the hand of Yah. Through many trials and tribulations, through many trials and tribulations, we must stand. It's the proving. It's the testing for those that love Almighty God. Do we give up because we go through trials? Why no, we do not. We stand sure and we stand fast. If I die, I die. It's Almighty God that has created me. And he, if he chooses to take me to my grave, at this time, so be it. He has created me. Can I tell you? It is John that creates us. So even when we say, well, this is my body, I do what I want. Yah has created you, daughter. Not you, it's not your body. So what you do with your body, what you do with your body, if you go against the will of Almighty Yah, you're sinning. Do you understand that, daughters? When you go against Torah truth, you are sinning. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price because of your Yeshua HaMashiach. We must understand that. We must understand that. Can I tell you something, daughters? If you dress loose, you got your breasts out, you're showing off your big pretty legs, and you draw some man unto you, and he takes you by force, it's because you have caused that to come upon you. Do you hear me? There's a way that the daughters of design should dress. We cover ourselves. You're not out there on the job laboring. You can be out there on the job working, can I tell you? And you might cause something you have on my draw man. And he takes you. Well, you shouldn't be there anyway. Do you all hear me? You should be at home in a place where y'all had told us where you should be. Being a keeper of the home. So sometimes when things happen, daughters, it's because you have incurred that thing to happen to you. You say, well, yes, it's a shameful thing and it's sorrowful. But can I tell you, daughters, we must learn this Torah truth. And always sometimes you're going to get the understanding. You've got to deny this belly of yours. Just deny the belly. Set aside a fast. Set aside time to pray. So that you can hear from Almighty Yah. No, he's just not going to talk to you one on one. So that you can hear the righteous messenger. Hallelujah. The behavior of a foolish daughter. Do we ever consider that we're foolish? You got to laugh about everything. You got to tell a joke. Hear a joke here. Hear a joke there. That's not of Yah. That's the way of a foolish woman. So, daughters, we're going to have to really examine ourselves. Don't worry about examining anybody else. Really, don't. You examine you according to the Torah and see where you fall. Hallelujah. So, let us go and look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. A foolish daughter is clamorous. She is simple. She knows nothing. She is silly. She stirs up commotion. She's always laughing. She lacks maturity. She is loud. She rages. And she's simple-minded. The foolish woman. Do you all hear me? So we as daughters of Zion, we have to learn how to study to be quiet. We don't need to be heard for our much speech. Nobody needs to know what you know. If you know it, it'll be seen. What you know, daughters, it'll be seen in your everyday living. That's why living here in a place like this, in a community setting, we as the daughters of Zion, we practice righteousness. We critique each other. We share scripture with each other. We show it, daughter, you can't do that. Daughter, that's too short. All right, daughter, you need to work with that little one. She's, she's showing you who's in command. So every day, every day, we critique 
each other according to Torah truth. See, when you're out there on your own, you're not going to hear anybody because you think you got it all right. But that should let you know that there's something like it when you know, when you, when you say you've been walking this way 10 years or better, and you're still laboring out there on the job, you're still cracking jokes with those folks on your job, it sure shows that you know nothing. You know nothing. Hallelujah. So you're simple-minded, you're foolish, you're always telling a joke, or you always want to hear a joke, you know nothing. Let's go to verse 14. It says, for she sits at the door of her house on a seat in a high place of the city to call pass passengers who go right on their way. So this is the, the lazy woman. She's at home where she should be cleaning. She's watching to see who's coming by. And she's begging, come over here, let me tell you something. Girl, let me, did you hear that? Get, get over here, let me tell you this. She's nosy, she's a busy body. She knows nothing. And she knows she's going to fall. She, she knows that. So she's trying to find out who she can get to fall with her. She knows nothing. Foolish, loud, instead of being a keeper at home. Verse 16. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. That's what she's saying. Look, at she's just as silly as I am. She's been out there all morning. She ain't done that. She's just out there running her mouth. Let me call on over here to me. Let me tell her what I know. Well, you know nothing. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knows not, and she knows not, that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Daughters cannot tell you. You think those waters, what she's about to put in your ear, you think it's sweet gossip. Well, it's nothing but foolishness. And she telling you that in secret, she's already told somebody else. That's all she does. She's a busy body minding everybody's business but her own. So Yah's telling us here, daughters, that women like you are in hell. They're in hell. And you continue that way and you call someone else to fall, you've already fallen, you're gonna take someone else to hell. So when someone wants to give you something hot off to the press, reject it. That's why living in a setting like this, we can correct each other. Can I tell you, if you don't get it right, you'll leave from here, you'll flee, and you'll flee when no one pursues you. So this, in this scripture, is telling you what the foolish woman does. And if you fall into that category, you have the power to change that by getting on your knees before Almighty God and rejecting foolishness like this. Hallelujah. I've been young and now I'm old. I've seen foolish women and I've seen righteous women. And at one time I was a foolish woman. But once I came to the knowledge of the truth, I started making my crooked paths straight. And you can do it as well, daughters. You just got to let Yahshua reign here. Hallelujah. So as a wise daughter versus a foolish daughter, the difference between them, there is a difference. It's like night and day. But let us go to Proverbs 14 and 1. It says, every wise daughter she builds, not tear down, she builds her house by praying and seeking Almighty God and picking up the daily lecture. She, is, she does it continuously, every day. She doesn't let a day go by and not giving toda and praises to Almighty God. But the foolish door she plucks her house down with her hands by overthrowing authority, destroying, trying to destroy that which is tough, always speaking evil, never seeing anything tough in anything. That's what the foolish daughter does. 
verse 2. It says, he that walks in his uprightness. If you're walking upright doors, you feel mighty young. But he that is perverse in his way despises almighty young. When you don't consider your own ways doing it, you, you despise almighty young. You can say what you will. When a righteous mother tells you what's right to do, and you say it doesn't take all that. Well, I don't want to hear from her. She's old-fashioned. Well, Almighty Yah is old-fashioned. There's nothing new under the sun. So you must consider how you receive this truth. Can I tell you, when you receive it, you will walk therein. Verse 13. I'm, I'm sorry, verse 3. It says, the mouth of the foolish door is a rod of pride. She's full of pride. She's haughty. She has no wisdom. She is perverse in her ways. And she doesn't consider nobody and nothing. So daughters, I'm here to tell you, if you're haughty, boastful, full of vanity, you think it's all about you, you're so beautiful, nobody is as beautiful as you are, you are truly deceived this day. The hand of Yah is not upon you. But the hand of Hasatan is on you. Can I tell you, if you don't train your daughters in what's right to do, they will be just like you. Well, I want them to be like Sister Bethany. Well, they're not going to be like Sister Bethany because they live with you. For as the mother is, so will the daughter be. If you're always complaining about everything, the hand of Hasatan is upon you. A beautiful daughter will always obey the commandments of Yah. A beautiful daughter will always obey the commandments of Yah. Ask yourself that question. Are you one of the foolish daughters or are you a beautiful daughter of Zion according to the commandments of Yah? I like to go to Proverbs chapter 10 verse 8. The wise in land will receive the commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. You're always speaking foolishly. You never hear anyone. You just want to be heard for your much speaking. Daughters, I have learned on this road just to be quiet. When I'm in my home, most of the time I well, 99.9% of the time, I never strike a conversation with Ray Ock. I let him speak first. I hear the messenger. It is that messenger that has got me this far. Not from what I know, but, but from what I have learned from him. Do you all hear me? Do you, daughter, you must learn to honor the head. You must learn to honor the head. The blessings and the discipline of the wise daughter, the readiness of the wise, the willingness of the daughters preparing the beauty of the tabernacle. You think it's a building, but it's you, daughters. You are the tabernacle. You are the dwelling place of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why you can't be out there working amongst the heathen. You're going to do as the heathens do. You can say what you will or may. You're going to act just like the heathens. You're going to try to please them and all that. Yes, you're going to please them to keep your job. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. I'm not, you can say that all day long. I've been out amongst the heathens. I worked a job. The way I dressed, did you think it was to please the heathens? Costly array. Do you hear me? Oh no, I get my clothes from eBay, but you're trying to please the heathen because you don't want them to make mark me of you. No, you don't. Well, I just let a little bit of hair hang out so they won't say that I look like Ellie Mae Clampett. Well, daughters, I'm here to tell you, you still look like Ellie Mae Clampett. Or what's her name, the little, little house on the prayer. That's who you look like. Because you're trying to please the heathen. But let us go to Exodus Shemoth. 35 and 22. And they came, both men and women, as many as were 
willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewelry of gold. And every man that offered an offering, an offering of gold to Almighty Yah. We give Yah our best. And we being the dwelling place, the tabernacle where Yahshua and Almighty Yah dwells. We must give Him our very best every day. So you have to cast down your evil thoughts, your evil actions and deeds. You're hearing the commandments, you're hearing the instructions of Almighty Yah. You can say you hear it, but if you're not doing it, then you don't hear. Did you all hear me? If you're not doing it, doing then you're not a hearer of this truth. I know we always try to convince ourselves that we're doing so righteous. We're doing so right. But if you just sit down and take time and look at you, I can look at me every day and see where I fall. Every day I can look at me and see where I fall. I shouldn't have said that. I could have went that extra mile with that sister. I didn't have patience with that little one. Every day, I can see where I have fallen. And when you're out there in the workforce, daughters, you are fallen. You can think what you want, and you can say, well, my honey said I'm sweet as uh, what, pound cake with strawberries and the whipped topping. Not so. We've got to understand, we've got to obey the commandments of Almighty God. That's why it took the Hebrew Israelites 44 years out there in the wilderness when it was only one day's journey because they could never get it on the right. They wanted to do it this way and that way. Well, that's too hard. Well, I'm going to do it the way my grandmother did it. Well, I'm going to do it the way my great-great-grandfather did it. As, as Jethro told Moshe, you're taking too much on it. So pick righteous men to help you with this task. So, Doris, I'm here to tell you I'm here to tell you, you must take heed to yourself, your ways, your, your thoughts, because you think you need this, you got to have that, and if you just live a simple life, and you realize you don't really have to have what you think you have to have, hallelujah. But these righteous men and women, they gave y'all their, their, their very, very best, verse 23. And every man with whom was found, he found, was found with blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skin of rams and badgers, skin brought them. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought Yahweh's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought in. So they brought the very, very best to Almighty Yahweh. Whatever was needed, these righteous men and righteous women brought it to the shepherd. And they knew the shepherd would do right by it. Hallelujah. So we being righteous vessels, if we honor the man of Yah, when he commands us to do something, we do it. We do. Verse 25. And all the daughters that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. Daughters, are we giving y'all the fine linen? You know, when we receive offerings, you can pay your tithes from your offerings, but then you give an offering, a little extra, because you're totally blessed by the messenger of Almighty God. But laboring with your hands, when you go that extra mile, you know, we only have a few daughters here, and you must be faithful in whatever you do, from the cleaning of the tabernacle, the preparing of the meals, 
You know, we have a daughter here, and I'm telling you, she's on the other side of the camera. She, when she gets an offer, she doesn't mind giving that extra to make the meals beautiful. During the feast day, she's always going out of her way. to make, And she has children. She has six. And every need for her children is met. And she's not greedy. She's not consumed, I got to have this, that, and that, the other. She's not that way. And when you have a heart like that, y'all will give you even more. But when you're not willing to give and you say, well, they got offerings coming in. Yes, we do have offerings coming in. The light bill, we have to pay the electricity. We have to pay to even use our own water. We never consider that. We never. It's all about me, myself, and I. In order we have to look beyond that. And you say, I'm going to give a little extra because the messenger, I was blessed. I was touched by what he said. He showed me how vile I am. And we are vile. We are vile creatures. If you don't beg, you will stink. Can I tell you, it's hot here in Jefferson, South Carolina. You say, well, one bath is not enough. Sometimes two baths are not enough. You may have to take that third bath because it's hot here. So I'm saying to you, daughters, that you have to go that extra mile. Give a little more. Work a little harder. You might have to assist with cleaning. We sometimes we have guests here for the feast days. So you're gonna have to labor a little harder. Clean another guest house. Something may happen that you gotta go back again and do it over. So your labor to Almighty Yah is important. And you can't do it grudgingly. You must do it with a pure love to Almighty God. We must be excited about this truth. And we must be excited about y'all's feast days. And yes, it takes labor. It takes hard work. And it takes diligence unto Almighty God. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 26. It says, And all the doors whose hearts stirred them up and wisdom spun goats hair. They, they labored with their hands, daughter. That's all they're saying. They had a commitment unto Almighty God. And they labored with their hands willingly. Nobody had to push them. Nobody had to beat them. Nobody had to make them. They had a willing heart unto Almighty God. And they gave their very best. Hallelujah. The sins of this nation... The calling of the wise daughters, they are much needed in this hour. So the sin in this nation now is great. It is. Can you find a daughter that's willing to pray? Can you find a daughter that's willing to turn her plate down with you? To pray with you? To pray for the righteous men, the righteous daughters of Zion? You know, most of the time you're only praying about your kids. You want your grandma saved and your granddaddy saved. You want your daughter saved. Your drug hate son say, Oh, you're praying for them. Oh, y'all pray for them. Save them, y'all. That's the kind of prayer you're praying. Is that the will of Almighty Yah? Did you ever think of that? Is that the will of Yah? It's not. It's not. Y'all say pray for the righteous. Did you hear me? Let me, Yah says, pray for the righteous, the righteous shepherd, the righteous daughters of Zion, the righteous Akim of Zion. Not your wicked sons, not your wicked daughters, not your wicked great great grandma. She gonna die in her sins. Hallelujah. So let's take it a little bit farther. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 18. It says, and let them make haste. Let us make haste, daughters, and take up wailing for us, that our eyes may be run down with tears, and our eyelids gushed out with waters. Let us take a wailing and a lamentation that we cry out for the people of Yah. 
We're scattered all over the old land. We're not many. We're few. When you, if daughters, even when you go out just to do your little shopping for your home, can, do you see righteous daughters? Do you see righteous men? They're only few, and they're scattered abroad, just a few faithful. So if you are not crying out, who do you expect to cry out? We must cry out for the righteous seed of Zion. So you fall short in that area because you're only considering your kinsman. No, I cry out for the righteous. I do. I have a brother that I love much. Yes, I do. I have a brother that I love much. While you crying out for him and, and praying for him, I say, y'all let your will be done. I cry out for the righteous because that's what Torah commands. We must mourn for the people of God, that they be not consumed with what is taking place in this world today. It is by the hand of Yah that these things are taking place. Yah has everything under control. And until we understand that, it's only by the hand of Yah that these things happen. It's only by the hand of Yah. It's not the hand of Hasatan. Because power is only, life and death is in the hand of Almighty Yah. Life and death is in the hand of Almighty Yah. Anytime any situation happens, Yah has allowed it to happen. Until we realize that and come to grips with that. So I'm not overwhelmed. Yet yeah, sometimes things happen that's very sorrowful. Very, very sorrowful. And I, I, yes, I may cry when you see things that happen. But then you must still pray for the righteous. That these things do not over, overwhelm us as the righteous. That we be not consumed in these situations. So let us well do it. Let us cry, saying, Yah, save the righteous people of Yah. Verse 19. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we plundered? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwelling have cast us out. Daughters, if we would just do what the Torah commands. Praying, crying out, giving Yah Torah for all that He has done for us, for you personally, what He has done for you. It's a personal walk with Almighty Yah. If you hear the messenger, you will be blessed every time you hear it. You can cast everything that's not like you out. Every day you got to cast something out. Your dirty thoughts, your dirty thoughts are yours. Your dirty thoughts are yours. Governing what you say out of your mouth, daughter. There's life and death in the tongue. So if you speak life to you, you will have life. If you speak death to yourself, then you will cause death to come upon you. Daughters, I am happy every day of my life because I'm alive. I'm walking in truth. I hear the, I know who the righteous messenger is. I know. And it's by the hearing of this truth, it has made me free. Who Yah makes free is free indeed. I am free to show how him every day. When I wake up, I give told up to Almighty Yah. Because I'm in a place like this. Where there's no burden. There's no burden on me, daughters. I can be an example to these young daughters every day. I'm an old woman. A crippled old woman. And I take great delight in this truth that I hear. I take great delight in seeing the daughters labor. When we labor together. Picking the greens, cutting the broccoli, preparing meals. I take great delight in that. It's not about my sister. I don't even know where my sister is. I do have a natural sister. She's about 52 years old. I don't like to hear the way she lives. It's, it's really, it's heart-wrenching. But I take great delight that I'm in a place like this. That I can be an example to these daughters. And I can fulfill my need as a mother. A mother of Ema and an Ema indeed. I don't give I work every day with these daughters. And when I'm tired, I'll tell them I'm tired. But I know y'all will give me strength just to push just a little bit harder.
to get the job done. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 9 and 20. It says, Yet hear the word of Yahweh. We must hear it. O oh, you daughters, and let your ear receive the word of Yah's mouth and teach it to your daughters. Teach them how to wail, how to cry out, how to repent when they've done wrong and everyone his neighbor how to lamentate. Daughters, you must teach. If you don't train your daughters up, they will go the way of the world. Do you hear me? If you mothers don't practice being an example before your daughters, the world will grab hold of your daughters and they will go the way of the world. So that's why we have to be examples to our daughters. You can't look for the world to show them how to live Kodash and to live clean and set apart. You must sit down with them every day and you must train them in the ways of Torah truth. You must teach them how to labor with their hands and how to take great delight in doing that which is righteous. Mothers, y'all will hold you accountable if the world grab hold to your daughters. It's our place, our place to train, to instruct, to be an example before our daughters today. Hallelujah. For death is come up into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. So mothers, if you don't train your daughters up, they're already trying to consume our sons. They will consume our daughters as well. So that's why we, we as saying that we love Almighty Yah, if you say it, you must live it. Do you hear me? You must hear the messenger and you must be examples to your children. Your sons must see it as well as your daughters. You can't be lazy and slothful and always making excuses. It's easy to make excuses. But it takes a bold nature from Almighty Yah to do what is right. I don't want to see the daughters cut off, nor do you want to see the sons cut off. So you, that's why you have to practice this every day of your life. Every day. And you must love it. You must love what Yah has done for you. The family of Yah that Yah has chosen you must total y'all for that, daughters. And every day, every day, every day, pick up the daily ledger. Get it in here, daughters. The heart is really here. So once you put it here, it will be the beating of your heart. You want to please y'all. Every day as you get up, you plan your day. You seek Almighty Yah. You say, Yah, is this your will? Is this your will for me to live this way? It is his will. Not being out there amongst wolves, but to be with the people of Yah. If that is in your heart, when you get it there, no, it don't take no 40 years, no less. Once you come, you must hear me now, once you come to the knowledge of his truth, you must walk therein. The reason you're still out there amongst wolves is because you really haven't come to the knowledge of this truth. For who the Son makes free is free indeed. For who the Son makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah. We remind ourselves of the action of our past day and we stay strong. We remind ourselves of the actions of our past and we stand strong. I stand strong this day in Yahshua. I stand sure of who my Redeemer is and it is Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us go daughter to Titus chapter 3 Verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. 
I was foolish at one time. The way I did things, and thinking I was better than somebody, when I was no better than the drunken slut on the street. Disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, I was hateful, hating one another. That was me. Do you all hear me, daughters? I was once this very way. I was disobedient to my mother. I was deceived by my own thoughts, my own lust, serving divers lust, everything I, I saw I wanted. I was striving to keep up with the Joneses. I had to have this, I had to have that. I wanted everybody to think I was somebody when I was nobody. I was nobody. The more you have, the more you want. I was never satisfied. But once I came to the knowledge of this truth, I was made free. I was made free. You know, you find doors that say, oh, I love y'all, but they're lazy. You can't depend on them for anything. They want to make excuses. They want to blame mom and daddy. Well, my sister is because of this or it's because of that. Once you come to the knowledge of the truth, you're free from all of that. Do you hear me? Your mind is renewed. There comes about a change, a true change in your sure machine. So no more excuses, boys. That's why I know you don't, when you say that, I know you haven't heard. You truly don't hear the messenger. You're just marking time. You're just marking time. There's nothing new under the sun. What you've gone through, everybody's gone through the same thing. So stop making excuses. I can make excuses like that too. I could. My father was a drunkard. He beat my mother. Oh, I'm so traumatized, but can I tell you? Can I tell you something, Dorothy? When I was vile and wicked, that didn't stop me. I'm in the truth now, you think that's gonna stop me? I know who I am in your shoe. I know who I am. There's the elect, and there is the very elect. And in Yah's house, there's vessels of honor, and there are vessels of dishonor. Yah said, let the we and the tear go together. He said he will send the Melachim to do the reaping. Daughters, and can I tell you, I choose to be an a, a, a vessel of honor today because of your sure Hamashiach. I walk with a boldness in who I am, crippled and all. I love that Yah has chosen me for this hour to be an example to every daughter that hears this message today. Let us strive for excellence, daughters. Let us cast aside every complaint, every excuse, because it's going to damn you. That's, that's all it's going to do. It's going to damn you. So I will not be damned this day. I will be borrowed from Almighty Yah. Let's go to verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. My, I haven't done anything righteous, daughters. Everything I do every day is nothing but filthy rags. But according to His kindness. He's shown us great kindness. Yah has shown us great kindness. You just like to make excuses. Yah has shown us great kindness this day. He has delivered us. I am delivered. I am free by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Ruah HaKadosh. HaKadosh this day. You are free. You are free, daughters, to love him, to do right, to honor Almighty Yah in everything that you do. By the laboring of your hands, stop being lazy, daughters. Stop being slothful. Stop making excuses. Strive to be perfect this day in Yahshua HaMashiach. He's made you free. You're no more bound. Hasatan comes to bind you. You're no more bound, daughters. You're free today. Walk in the power. Speak the power of your sure heart.
share. Speak it, daughters. Speak it to yourself. Speak it to your children. Hallelujah. I've come today to give you a nice spanking. That's what you need. You need a spanking. Oh, I don't believe. Well, y'all says the rod of correction would drive those unclean spirits out. So I'm coming to spank you today that you stand in the power of the righteousness of Almighty God. And you let Hasatan steal no more from you. You let Hasatan steal, because that's what he comes to steal, to rob, and to kill. He doesn't care anything about you. He doesn't. So that's why you have to walk in the power of the boldness of your shoe on the And my last verse, Titus 3 and 6. It says, Yahweh has sent Yahshua. He is shed on us abundantly through Yahshua HaMashiach. He has shed his blood for us and he's given us abundantly the power to overcome. If Yahshua overcame, we can overcome too. That we're no more justified Hallelujah. But by his free, unmerited love and favor, we should be made heirs according to the tigva of eternal life. So Yah has given us eternal life today, daughters. Stop making excuses. Walk in the power and the authority of Yahshua HaMashiach. Cast down your evil thoughts, your evil actions and deeds. Be a hearer of Torah and truth. Don't keep some of the commandments, but keep all of the commandments of Almighty God. Starting this day, daughters. So choose today. Are you going to walk in the power as a daughter of Imuna or a daughter of Hasatan? He comes to kill, to steal. But Yah has come to make us victorious in this walk today. Hallelujah. So, daughters, do you want to be a blessing or do you want to be a curse? You have the power to choose. Choose this day life so that you can live. So you can be an example to another daughter that is striving this day for perfection. Yah will baruch your daughters. And may this teaching be a blessing to you. The message came prepared from Rehab Dawi, Mayish. Hallelujah. And I told y'all for him, I told y'all for all the truth that I hear every day of my life. When we must learn, we must be examples one to another. So until the next teaching, hold fast to this truth. Listen to it over and over till you get it in here, girls. He that hears become a doer of this truth. So Shema this day, and may it bring strength to you all. Shalom Aho Ashley, we pray that all is well, stand strong in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh Baruch you this day. Shalom, Shalom from Teshua.